She's the most beautiful thing on earth. Look at her through the window and say, you, damn, you're good looking. <laughs> you actually get nervous, you shake, you sweat, your heart beats, and then you open the door to get in. Close to you, you could sort of, you know, shove it down into a second. The sound, the vibration. The front window's open. You pop those and uh, cruise long, wind in your face. It was like the first car that just allowed you to have freedom. Freedom! They're great from getting it a point A to point B. Brings me from A to B. From A to B. The car's not just about getting from A to B. It's something I really love. I can fit like a full drum kit. I play golf, so I put my golf stuff in the back. That's why it's good having a practical car more than just a sports car or something where it's all about looks and performance. The, the power and the, the prestige. The was glamorous. Oh, I like the, uh, the image probably, you know. Ego driven. You need to feed your ego. It's a midlife crisis, I think. <laughs> it's like an extension of who you are. I believe I always had nice cars. I've always wanted this car, so I kind of felt like I had made it, yeah. And we felt really cool. And it was, we felt, well, we were young. Yeah, right to passage. And the fact that it was crap made it cool. I think people realise that what you drive actually says a lot about you and your life. I can't imagine myself to be without a car. I mean, you get attached to vehicles sometimes, but I'm not, a, I'm, I'm not like that. But I do like my scooter. I really like the spoilers. <laughs> because they make them look sporty. And I like that. That's the look that I like. You know, like some people like their kids. So, <laughs> I like my car. How do you explain a passion? I don't know, it just is. She's the best, I love it.